IRQ-7 Shadow The IRQ-7 Shadow is an American unmanned aerial vehicle, UAV, used by the United States Army, Australian Army and Swedish Army for reconnaissance, surveillance, target acquisition and battle damage assessment. Launched from a trailer-mounted pneumatic catapult, it is recovered with the aid of resting gear similar to jets on an aircraft carrier. Its gimbal-mounted, digitally stabilized, liquid nitrogen-cooled electro-optical-slash-infrared, EO-slash-I.R, camera relays video in real-time via C-band line-of-sight data linked to the ground control station, GCS. The U.S. Army's 2nd Battalion, 13th Aviation Regiment at Fort Huachuca, Arizona, trains soldiers, Marines, and civilians in the operation and maintenance of Shadow UAS. The Shadow is operated in the U.S. Army at brigade level. The RQ-7 Shadow is the result of a continued U.S. Army search for an effective battlefield UAS after the cancellation of the Alliant RQ-6 Outrider aircraft. I Corporation followed up their RQ-2 Pioneer with the Shadow 200, a similar, more refined UAS. In late 1999, the Army selected the Shadow 200 to fill a tactical UAS requirement, redesignating it the RQ-7. Army requirements specified a UAS that used an aviation gasoline engine, could carry an electro-optic-slash-infrared imaging sensor turret, and had a minimum range of 31 miles, 50 kilometers, with 4-hour, on-station endurance. The Shadow 200 offered at least twice that range, powered by a rotary engine. The specifications also dictated that UAS would be able to land in an athletic field. The RQ-7 Shadow 200 unmanned aircraft system is of a high-wing, constant cord pusher configuration with a twin-tail boom empennage and an inverted V-tail. The aircraft is powered by a AR-741-1101 Wankel engine designed and manufactured by UAV Engines Limited in the United Kingdom. Onboard electrical systems are powered by a jack slash 28 volt direct current 2000 W generator. Currently, the primary load of the aircraft is the Israeli Aircraft Industries POP 300 plug-in optical payload which consists of a forward-looking infrared camera, a daytime TV camera with a selectable near-infrared filter and a laser pointer. The aircraft has fixed tricycle landing gear. Takeoffs are assisted by a trailer-mounted pneumatic launcher which can accelerate the 170 kg, 375 pound, aircraft to an Landings are guided by a tactical automatic landing system, developed by the Sierra Nevada Corporation, which consists of a ground-based micromillimeter wavelength radar and a transponder carried on the aircraft. Once on the ground, a tail hook mounted one the aircraft catches an arresting wire connected to two disc brake drums which can stop the aircraft in less than. The aircraft is part of a larger system which currently uses the M1152 series of Humvees for ground transport of all ground and air equipment. A Shadow 200 system consists of four aircraft, three of which are transported in the Air Vehicle Transporter, AVT. The fourth is transported in a specially designed and storage container to be used as a spare. The AVT also tows the launcher. The AVT support vehicle and trailer contain extra equipment to launch and recover the aircraft such as the tactical automatic landing system. Maintenance equipment for the aircraft is stored in the maintenance section multifunctional, MSM vehicle and trailer as well as the M1165 MSM support vehicle and its associated trailer. Two Humvee mounted ground control stations, GCS, also part of the Shadow 200 system, control the aircraft in flight. Each station has an associated ground data terminal, GDT which takes commands generated by the GCS and modulates them into radio waves received by the aircraft in flight. The GDT receives video imagery from the payload, as well as telemetry from the aircraft, and sends this information to the GCS.A trailer, towed by the M1165 GCS support vehicle, carries the GDT and houses a 10 kW tactical quiet generator to provide power for its associated GCS. The Shadow 200 system also includes a portable ground control station. PGCS, and Portable Ground Data Terminal, PGDT, which are stripped-down versions of the GCS and GDT designed as a backup to the two GCSs. A fielded Shadow 200 system requires 22 soldiers to operate it. Army modeling indicates that crew workload is highest at takeoff, and second highest at landing. The Shadow is restricted from operating in bad weather conditions, not being meant to fly through rain and with sensors that cannot see through clouds. By July 2007, the Shadow platform accumulated 200,000 flight hours, 
doubling its previous record of 100,000 hours in 13 months. The system then surpassed 300,000 flight hours in April 2008, and by May 2010, the Shadow system had accumulated over 500,000 flight hours. As of 2011, the Shadow had logged over 709,000 hours. The Shadow platform has flown over 37,000 sorties in support of operations in Iraq and Afghanistan by U.S. Army and Army National Guard units. On August 6, 2012, I announced that the Shadow had achieved 750,000 flight hours during more than 173,000 missions. More than 900,000 flight hours had been logged by Shadow WAVs by the end of June 2014. The Shadow did not see service in the Afghanistan campaign of 2001 to 2002, but it did fly operational missions in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. The operating conditions in Iraq proved hard on the WAVs with heat and sand leading to engine failures, resulting in a high-priority effort to find fixes with changes in system technology and operating procedures. Shadow UAS have since flown more than 600,000 combat hours in support of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. In 2007, the United States Marine Corps began to transition from the RQ-2 Pioneer to the RQ-7 Shadow. VMU-1 VMU-2 completed their transition from the RQ-2 to the RQ-7 and Scan Eagle while VMU-3 and VMU-4 were activated as Shadow and Scan Eagle elements. VMU-3 was activated on September 12, 2008 and VMU-4 conducted its inaugural flight on September 28, 2010 in Yuma, Arizona. In October 2007, VMU-1 became the first Marine Corps squadron to see combat in Iraq. VMU-2 deployed a Shadow detachment to Afghanistan in 2009 with VMU-3 following in January 2010. The Navy provided personnel for four shadow platoons in support of Army brigades deployed in Iraq. The first two platoons returned from six-month tours in Iraq in January and February 2008. The Navy personnel went through the Army's training program at Fort Huachuca, Arizona. The U.S. Army is implementing a plan to reform its aerial scout capabilities by scrapping its fleet of OH-58 Kiowa helicopters from 2015 to 2019 and replacing them with AH-64 Apache attack helicopters teamed with Shadow and MQ-1C Gray Eagle WAVs. Using unmanned assets to scout ahead would put the pilots' off-manned aircraft out of reach of potential harm. Reformed Combat Aviation Brigades, CAB would consist of a battalion of 24 Apaches for attack missions and an armed reconnaissance squadron of another 24 Apaches teamed with three shadow platoons totaling 12 RQ-7s overall, it would also include a Grey Eagle company. The manned unmanned teaming of Apaches and unmanned aircraft, UA, can meet 80% of aerial scout requirements. On March 16, 2015, the 1st Battalion, 501st Aviation Regiment was reflagged the 3rd Squadron, 6th Cavalry Regiment making it the first of 10 Apache battalions to be converted to a heavy attack reconnaissance squadron by eliminating the Kiowa scout helicopter and having three RQ-7 shadow platoons organically assigned. The attack battalions will also be aligned with an MQ-1C Gray Eagle company assigned to each division. Moving shadows from brigade combat team level to the battalions themselves reduces lines of communication, distance issues, and allows operators and pilots to better train and work together. In early July 2014, the U.S. Army sent RQ-7 Shadows to Baghdad as part of efforts to protect embassy personnel against Islamic State militant attacks, along with Apache attack helicopters which could use them through man-slash-unman teaming to share information and designate targets. On July 29, 2018, the U.S. Marine conducted its final launch of the RQ-7B during RIMPAC exercises before retiring it. Since first deploying with Marines to Iraq in October 2007, the aircraft eventually equipped four tactical UAS squadrons, flying some 39,000 hours during 11 operational deployments. The Shadow was replaced by the RQ-21 Blackjack, which was first deployed in 2014. The Shadow system has also received a special airworthiness certificate, experimental, from the Federal Aviation Administration authorizing operations at Benson Municipal Airport. In 2007, a general aviation facility in southeastern Arizona. This airworthiness certificate was one of the first issued by the FAA permitting an unmanned aircraft to operate at a public use airport that serves general aviation, and the first FAA certificate covering the system's technologically sophisticated automated landing system. This is currently the only FAA certification category available to UAS manufacturers. On 2 February, 2017, 
a shadow launched from an outlying airfield near Fort Huachuca, Arizona disappeared. After a fruitless search, the Army concluded it had crashed. It was found nine days later in the mountains west of Denver. The ARC U-7A was the initial version of the Shadow 200 UAS developed by I. The first low-rate initial production systems were delivered to the U.S. Army in 2002 with the first full-scale production systems being delivered in September 2003. The ARC U-7A was long and had a wingspan of with a max takeoff weight. The aircraft's endurance ranged between 4 and 5.5 hours depending on mission. The A-model aircraft also had the AR-741-1100 engine which could use either 87-octane automotive gasoline or 100-LL aviation fuel. The A-model also featured Dia's POP-200 payload. Production of Shadow aircraft shifted to a generally improved RQ-7B variant in the summer of 2004. The RQ-7B features new wings increased in length too. The new wings are not only more aerodynamically efficient, they are wet to increase fuel storage up to 44 liters for an endurance of up to 6 hours. The payload capability has been increased too. After reports from Iraq that engines were failing, in 2005, the Army's UAV project manager called for the use of 100 LL, an aviation fuel, rather than the conventional 87 octane Mogus. Avionics systems have been generally improved, and the new wing is designed to accommodate a communications relay package which allows the aircraft to act as a relay station. This allows commanders or even the aircraft operators theme Silvesto communicate via radio to the troops on ground in locations that would otherwise be dead to radio traffic. The Shadow can operate up to from its Brigade Tactical Operations Center, and recognize tactical vehicles up to above the ground at more than slant range. Other incremental improvements to the system include replacing the AR-741-1100 engine with the AR-741-1101 which increases reliability through the use of dual spark plugs as well as limiting the fuel to 100 LL. Also, the older POP-200 payload was replaced with a newer POP-300 system. In February 2010, I began a fleet update program to improve the shadow system. The improvements include installing the wiring harnesses and software updates for EAS POP 300D payload which includes a designator for guiding laser-guided bombs. Other improvements in the program will include an electronic fuel injection engine and fuel system to replace the AR 741-1101S carbureted engine. The most visible improvement to the system will be a wider wing of inspan which is designed to increase fuel capacity and allow for mission endurance of almost 9 hours. The new wings will also include hard points for external munitions. A joint Army Marine program is testing eye jamming on a shadow at Mikazuma. Another joint effort is to view a ground area from 3,650 meters, 12,000 feet. The Army is now proposing the upgraded Shadow 152A, which includes soldier radio waveform software, which allows both the command post and their troops to see the images that the UAV is projecting, as long as they are on the same frequency. It also increases the distance and area of communication. Preliminary TCDL testing conducted at Dugway Proving Ground was a success. This led to an estimated fielding date of May 2010 for TCDL. In March 2015, the first shadow unit was equipped with the upgraded RQ 7 BB 2 shadow version. New capabilities for the BB 2 include the TCDL, encryption of video and control data links. Software that allows interoperability between other UAS platforms, integration of a common control station and control terminal for all Army UAS platforms, an electronic fuel injection engine, and increased endurance to 9 hours through a lengthened wingspan of, with weight increased to. Shadow systems are being upgraded at a rate of 2 to 3 per month, with all Army shadows planned to become BB2s by 2019. On April 19, 2010 the Army issued a solicitation for sources sought from defense contractors for ammunition for the shadow system with a deadline for proposals due no later than May 10, 2010. Although no specific munition has been chosen yet, some possible munitions include the General Dynamics 81mm 4.5 kg, 10-pound, airdrop guided mortar as well as the quick med system for delivering medical supplies to remote and stranded troops. The Army subsequently slowed work, and the Marine Corps then took the lead on arming the RQ-7 Shadow. Raytheon has conducted successful flight tests with the small tactical munition, and Lockheed Martin has tested the Shadow Hawk glide weapon from an RQ-7. On November 1, 2012, General Dynamics successfully demonstrated their guided 81mm air-dropped mortar, 
with three launches at 7,000 feet hitting within 7 meters of the target grid. As of August 2011, the Marine Corps has received official clearance to experiment with armed RQ-7s, and requires I to select a precision munition ready for deployment. I was awarded $10 million for this in December 2011, and claims the weapon has already been fielded by the Shadow Dot in 2014. Textron launched the Fury Precision Weapon from a Shadow 200. By May 2015, the Marine Corps had run out of funding for weaponizing the RQ-7, and the Army had shown little interest in continuing the effort. The Army's stance is that the Shadow's primary capability is persistent surveillance, while there are many other ways to drop bombs on targets and adding hat to the Shadow would add weight and decrease endurance. A test version called STTB flew in summer 2011. I is developing a bigger version called M2 with a blended wing to include a three-cylinder 60-horsepower Lycoming heavy fuel engine, and began flight testing in August 2012. The Shadow M2 has a conformal blended body that reduces drag, wingspan increased to, and is heavier. It can fly for 16 hours at altitudes up to, its endurance and service ceiling are comparable to Group 4 UASs like the MQ-1 Predator so the company is pitching the M2 as a budget-conscious alternative to larger unmanned aircraft. It has a greater payload to carry synthetic aperture radar SAR, wide area surveillance, navigation, signals intelligence, and electronic warfare packages. It also has the ability to be controlled beyond line of sight through a SATCOM link. Although the M2 uses the same internal components as the RQ-7B Shadow 200 and is compatible with existing support equipment and ground infrastructure, its greater weight necessitates changes to the existing launcher. The Shadow M2 uses 80-85% to of the components of the Shadow F2, while allowing for an additional of capability with total airframe weight increase too. In June 2017, Textron introduced the Night Warden 2 as a production-ready model of the developmental Shadow M2. The change in name due to significant improvements and enhancements to the system such as greater flexibility and combat capability, SATCOM features, and enhanced command and control. The aircraft has a range of, maximum speed of, endurance of 15 hours, can fly at an altitude of, and has a maximum takeoff weight of with a dual payload bay with a capacity of. I has also built a scaled up Pioneer derivative known as the Shadow 600. It also resembles a Pioneer except that the outer panels of the wings are distinctively swept back, and it has a stronger Wankel engine, the UAV L-801, with a number of Shadow 600s are in service in several nations, including Romania. I, in conjunction with Textron's sister company Bell Helicopter, intends to modify two Shadows with a Carter rotor on top for vertical takeoff and landing, eliminating the need for the recovery and pneumatic launcher systems, while increasing payload and endurance. It is expected to fly in 2012. I also expected to use the SR C technology for the Shadow Knight, a powered rotor to propeller surveillance aircraft for the U.S. Navy MRMUAS program. However, the MRMUAS program was cancelled in 2012. On August 15, 2011, a U.S. Air Force C 130 cargo plane collided with a RQ 7 while on approach to Fab Sharana in Paktika Province, Afghanistan. The C 130 made an emergency landing with damage to two engines and one wing, while the RQ 7 was destroyed completely. The collision caused the cargo aircraft to be grounded for several months while being fixed, while the RQ 7 wreckage was never recovered. Early reports indicating that the mishap occurred when the C 130 took off without clearance were incorrect. The investigating board determined that the mishap was largely due to poor local air traffic control training and supervision. On April 3, 2014 a Pennsylvania Army National Guard RQ-7 participating in training exercises at Fort Indiantown Gap crashed near an elementary school in Pennsylvania and was then hit by a civilian vehicle destroying the drone. No injuries were reported. Note, when outfitted with the increased endurance, wings, the CRP, communications relay package, and the 1102 engine, endurance time is increased to 9 hours. Wingspan is increased to approximately, and the service ceiling is 18,000 feet, only with authorization. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.